Now that you've built out your fusion tree and filters, it's time to provide a little organization to them, using the underlays that are available within the fusion page. Let's jump right in and review how to do that. Here on the fusion page, let's start with our backed up filters. Click and drag over all of the nodes to select them. Then, open the search menu by hitting Ctrl plus space on your keyboard and search for Underlay. Add it, and you will now see a colored box surrounding your selected fusion nodes. Enlarge it by clicking and dragging the edges of the underlay out. Give yourself some room on these. We can change the color of the underlay by right-clicking on it and choosing Set Color from the context menu. We can also name this underlay, however, if you just right-click and rename it, you will be prompted to change the name for all of the nodes contained within the underlay. If that happens, just cancel on each prompt, unless you actually want to rename all of the nodes. Personally, I don't really like spending time on that. To rename just the underlay, hold down the Alt key on your keyboard, and right-click on it. Choose Rename from the menu. If your rename prompt says underlay, then you're good to go. Rename it in a way that describes what those nodes are collectively meant for. Here, I'm choosing to name this, Filters. Now if we select and move the underlay, all nodes within it will move as well. Next, add another underlay for the nodes that are part of the house masking file. Once again, give yourself some room within the underlay. For some reason, the nodes within the underlay will shift the next time we open this project. Giving them some space will prevent them from shifting outside of the overlay. Rename and change the color of this underlay as you see fit. Examining our fusion tree, we can see that it's a bit bunched up. Let's start giving ourselves some room to work with. First, let's clean up these media nodes from our previous testing. Click and drag to select all of your media nodes that are connected to the fusion tree limbs, and delete them. Next, start creating some space between each of the fusion tree limbs. You will want some room available when you start building out shows, so it's best to create that space now, instead of doing it after you've started creating branches and vines. For each limb of the fusion tree, surround it with an underlay, just like we did with the previous ones we created. Again, give yourself some room to work with on these underlays, and name them appropriately based on the limb they are surrounding. In this example, we have created limbs for the whole house, left side, middle side, right side, and garage door tree limbs. When you're finished, you may or may not have something that looks similar to this. Notice that the right side of the house isn't completely covered with a color. In a previous video I told you to ignore this, but let's address what's happening. Our template's viewing display is not being defined by any of our limbs. In fact, our original root node of the tree is what is defining our resolution and display. Everything else is just plugging into that trunk and passing through the viewer that has been set up by that root node. It can be bothersome though, so let's fix it. Now that we've wrapped each of our limbs in an underlay, we can easily and quickly navigate to them. In the nodes pane, click on these three dots. You'll now see each of your underlays listed within the menu. Selecting one of them will move us directly to that tree limb. Even though we use these background nodes to define the color of our mask when building out the fusion tree, that's not actually its primary job. What it is truly meant to do is act as an anchor to the entire fusion tree limb. When plugged into the main trunk, it will set the resolution of this entire limb to the same resolution as the root nodes we set up in the fusion tree. Now, when we add a merge node, we can plug in assets that don't have a matching resolution, and it will only have to be resized to fit. It won't alter or change the resolution of that limb. Also, this will force all assets plugged into this limb to be connected as foregrounds. Recall from our masking video that every merge must have a background, and one of the most common errors made in Fusion is connecting media in the wrong order. This eliminates that mistake. Whatever is plugged into the merge will always appear on top of that background node. Since we are here, there is one final trick I want to show you regarding merge nodes. Up to this point, the demos have been using transform nodes to move things around. However, you can accomplish the same thing with the merge nodes themselves. With the merge nodes selected, we can move the connected media or background using the inspector, just the same as if we were using a transform node. Still, I personally prefer to use the transform node solely for the visual cue it provides. This way, when I'm looking at my node structure, I know that I did a transform on that asset before plugging it in. If I had stuck with the merge node, I don't have that visual indicator that I've made a change. I'd recommend you do the same. 
but I wanted to make you aware that it is possible to modify the merges themselves. Now our fusion tree, filters, and node organization is complete. This is the building block of everything we will do going forward. In the near future, we will explore creating additional layers for the trim and windows on the home, and we will be using this layer as the starting point for that. Go ahead and remove any media that you don't need from the media pool. If it's not your masking file or your masking timeline, then delete it. Once you've cleaned up your media pool, remember to export your project to back up all the progress you've made so far. From the top menu, select File, then Export Project. If you backed up your project previously, overwrite the existing template. If not, name this house Masking Template. That's it for now. In the next video, we will be performing an overview of how we can use this template to build out something fairly simple. Consider it a thousand foot level view of the process, so you can get an idea of where this is all headed. In the meantime, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more Resolve Projection Mapping content.